Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Soulful Hunter podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Mack. Through this podcast, I'm on a mission to transform lives through primal adventure and to spread my mission of mentorship as conservation. This podcast is powered by Washington Backcountry, a resource for all hunters, both new and old. To find out more about Washington Backcountry, go to wabackcountry.com or search for Washington Backcountry on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. This podcast is also proudly presented by TNK Hunting Gear. If you haven't heard about TNK, then it's about time you do, everyone. I've been using TNK gear out in the field and on hunts and have absolutely fallen in love with their stuff. TNK is veteran owned and 100% made in America using only American made products. All their gear is covered under a lifetime warranty with no questions asked. If it breaks or fails, they will fix or replace it for free. TNK is a resource for bino harnesses, bow slings, and a lot more amazing gear. For more information about TNK hunting gear, go to their website. At T, the word and K, hunting.com. That's T A N D K, hunting.com. Or you can find them on Facebook and Instagram. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Don't forget to leave a review from T and K and the Soulful Hunter. Freedom on and stay soulful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Soulful Hunter podcast presented by T and K Hunting Gear. And uh, today we got. Dennis Stokes of Initial Ascent coming to talk to us all about his company and his backpacks that they create. I have been just a gear junkie all my life and even used to sell backpacks back when in the day when I used to work at REI. And I'd always ask people, what about their adventures? What are you planning? What do you got going on? And it wasn't until I got into hunting that I really understood the importance of a pack that could carry weight, carry it well, distribute it, and really help uh, enjoying the suck a little bit more. So Dennis, thanks so much for coming on, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Johnny. I appreciate you having me on. It's uh, it's an honor to be here. Oh man. It's always an honor to get a chance to talk to people, um, and build a community. That's what we're here. We're all about here at the soulful hunter is just building community, reaching out, teaching people, sharing knowledge and knowledge is power. And through that, we get more informed decisions that we can make and, you know, transforming lives man and you're doing it through a product uh that you're that you're creating and then you get to come on here share it with everyone else so super powerful yeah absolutely yeah we are we're very blessed to be able to uh, be in an industry like we like we're in and uh it's just it's it's so awesome uh being in the hunting industry and everybody's just so friendly and um it's just i i never I never imagined what it would be like. Um, it seems like during the pandemic, it's like pandemic's not even going on. You know, everybody, everybody's just concentrating on their tags. Everybody's concentrating on their gear, their training, yep. getting ready for next season. Yep. Uh, it, it's been, it's awesome. Totally. I loved it. Yeah, you and I were both at the Western Hunt Expo down in Salt yep. Lake City. Um, there's always this talk of, you got to really wash your hands when you're at the expo because you can get the expo flu or whatever, you know, <laughs> right. the, the shot, shot show flu, I think is where it starts and then it carries on. And so when I left, I was like, Oh man, I didn't get sick. Woo. You know, you're shaking all these hands and then all of a sudden coronavirus hits America and everyone's like frantically worried and starting to wash their hands for the first time. I'm like, geez, where were you guys back in the day? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so, okay, talk to us about Initial Ascent. What's what's the story behind it? What's your story? Uh, you know, let's talk to these listeners. Tell them why they need to buy an Initial Ascent pack. Awesome. Well, I, a little bit about me. I grew up in Florida, hunting, fishing. Um, you know, doing all the things that uh, little country boys like to do. Um, I lived on a dirt road and. Uh, just grew up loving life. My my dad got me into all that early, and um, then moved up to Idaho, or I'm sorry, moved to Alabama uh, after high school. Uh, went to college up there at a couple different spots, and uh, then in 2000, I uh, got married uh, on a Sunday in March, and two days later moved uh, to Idaho, honeymoon across the country in two separate vehicles. Beautiful. Um, it was awesome. <laughs> that is, that is, that's how it should be. That's true love right there. I, love I was so ready to uh, get on with my career. You know, I've been going to school for, for seven years and I was just, I was ready to go. 
and get out to Idaho. I, I didn't even know where Idaho was before um, <laughs> I got the job and, you know, came out for the, the interview. I thought it was Iowa the whole time. That's funny. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, we ain't in Iowa anymore, huh? <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so yeah, I came out here, um, fell in love with Western hunting uh, for a couple of years. And then my wife, uh, we got pregnant with twins and I put hunting on the back burner uh, for a little while. <laughs> so. I know how that goes. I, I, my journey as a hunter was trying to start my journey and then having three kids back to back to back. And so I got a five, five-year-old, a three-year-old and a 10-month-old. Okay, yeah, I've got three myself, uh, two 17-year-olds and then a 14-year-old, so. Love it. Um, busy, busy, you know, and so when my son was nine, um, so the twins were nine, that's when I, he showed some interest in, he was watching a, a hunting show with me, the I think it was Ted Nugent's Spirit of the Wild. Oh, yeah. And he just <laughs> loved it, wanted a bow. And all of a sudden, I had a great excuse to get back into hunting. So um, that's when I got back in. Uh, shortly thereafter, a couple years probably after, I met my uh, my partner, uh, Joe, with an, an initial scent. And we uh, shared a common bond uh, with hunting and with our kids. And we went to church together as well. And so fast forward, you know, a few years, we had owned lots and lots of backpacks. We're both gearheads, just love it and love tinkering with gear, trying to make things better, you know, for ourselves, for yeah. for our own hunts. And uh, we're both small in stature as far as uh, vertically challenged. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, so, you know, we're, we're built a lot alike and, and, packs just they didn't fit us some of them didn't fit good some of them you know had pockets where we didn't want them some some you know were too simplistic um we just we kept talking about hey this is what i would do this is you know joe would do and that spurred the idea to finally stop complaining about things and and try it on our own and try to try to build um build something and we started out um, with a foundation. We had to we had to get the foundation right because that's you know whether you're talking about your your backpack frame, your life, your family. Mm. Um, if you're your off job, just whatever. the smallest bit, you know, yeah. down the road, you're way off. Yeah, Absolutely. I totally get it. You you got to start with a good foundation, and so. We, uh, we took three years to develop the frame, research, um, design, test, all that, uh, three years till it was right. The, the soft goods par portion of it, um, we had designed, you know, it didn't take long to, to design what we wanted there. Um, but it's all designed around that frame and suspension. And so our frame is called the Integris Frame. It's a carbon fiber composite, and it it's gone through fifteen different iterations. And wow! So yeah, and, it, and it, it, fifteen over like what three years, four years, yeah, five th years, three what? three four year period. Because uh, we have changed, we have tweaked a little bit um, since we've launched, and we launched back in February of 2018 at western hunt and um so it took us three years from you know before that and then then going in so and these weren't big changes by any means yeah. they were just just tweaks i mean heck we spent we spent four changes just on the little gun notches you know where you put mm. your rifle sling right and and now it's not only gone from the rifle sling notch to we're hauling rear quarters up there. So uh, a friend of ours, uh, one of our ascent team athletes, Dave Baronio, he's a, a guide with R and K hunting company. And he for years had put quarters on a stick. So, so a meat stick, like they used to do it and uh -huh. would, would cut the little notch in the hock 
and then put those rear quarters on a stick and then put that up there uh, in between his, basically in between his pack and, and his neck. And so he'd carry, he carried it out like a pack and he would carry the, yeah, just like that. Yeah. And so all the listeners, the listeners, if you didn't see what I just did right there is imagine like an oxen having a yoke over its neck with something hanging on either side. Exactly. Yeah. Big old stick. So that's, yep. And that's what he would do. He would, he would do that. And then he saw these notches up there and we explained that these are for the rifle sling and that sort of thing. He said, I got a better idea for those. Next thing you know, he sends this picture of a mule deer, a whole mule deer, quartered up, every every piece of edible meat, and the and the head and the uh, the horns on his pack. And he told us the next day. He says, "I'm going to do an elk tomorrow." Wow! And I'm like, "I got to see this." <laughs> <laughs> and and sure enough, so his client had a cow elk tag, and harvested the cow, and he put all four quarters and all the loose meat in one trip. Wow. So we calculated out. It's all it's four quarters. Over, yeah. It's over 200 pounds. Dang, man. I remember. So when I shot my, my first and only elk, I was holding a rear ham straight out in front of me and I could barely keep it up. I mean, I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying I'm a weakling, but like my, my bull ended up after butcher, like over 300 pounds of meat and i was like dude so you're saying dude carried it out all four quarters and loose meat in one trip wow yeah i've got i've got multiple videos multiple pictures of him doing several animals like that i think over the last two years he's packed over 70 animals with that one frame wow that's cool so it really is. So let's talk a little bit about this. So I'm going to tell you my background here for a sec. So okay. when I I used to sell backpacks, and in the backpack world, you know, you're you know, you understand how to pack a back. You know, put the light stuff low, heavy stuff middle, light stuff at the top. You kind of you want it close to your back. You want to make sure it's comfortable, ready to rock and roll. And so I've have a lot of backpacking experience. I've done. A uh, 98 mile trip around Mount Rainier. I've done lots of sections of the Pacific Crest Trail. A lot of backpacking experience and a heavy pack and a, a pack that's not packed correctly is extremely <laughs> uncomfortable. Right. So I used the same pack for my very first hunt. That was a backcountry hunt. So because I worked at REI, I, I had all my gear, even though it wasn't tailored towards hunting. So I was like, oh, I got this North Face pack. Um, I have Osprey packs, all these different things, but I think that North Face might hold up a little better. And so nine miles back into the backcountry of the state of Washington, I shoot a black bear and I pack this thing out, cape and all meat. I didn't bone it out, Mm -hmm. put it all in my pack and hiked off the mountain. Now, that was single-handedly the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life because and I was supposed to run my very first marathon two months later. And so I, I have a lot of experience competing at a high level, but yet that was single-handedly the hardest thing, mentally, physically, emotionally. And what I realized is that not that I shot the biggest black bear, but because the way every all the meat and cape just sank to the bottom of my pack, that it just was felt like it was dragging off my butt and every step hurt. So yeah. when I learned about packs that were specifically made for hauling meat and for carrying large weight quantities and distributing them evenly, I was like, dude, I got to get in this game. I, that sucks so bad that <laughs> I, I have to figure out like a better way of doing this. Uh, and so that is one of the reasons I wanted to have you guys on here to talk this podcast because there's a lot of backpack companies out there. Yeah. You know, there, there's a lot of them. I actually, I don't even run an initial ascent. I would love to. I want to try it out, see what it's like because I just packed out my, my spring bear here um, two weeks ago on, I run a Mystery Ranch Metcalf and it was okay, yeah. but it, I felt myself constantly pinching in between my shoulder blades and just oh. like really painful, you know, and even mm-hmm. though my pack fits well with just my backpacking gear, when you throw that meat on there and I had to pack out the whole camp at the same time, it was uncomfortable. 
Yeah, it's a different story. And you know, I was talking to my partner about it today. We were we were talking about just talking about the capabilities of the way we're able to put meat on this frame. Uh, you know, it's just, and it's something that's kind of growing. It's it's growing steam, if you will, or um, it's gaining steam, growing steam. Uh, it's it's gaining steam. It can grow if it needs to. <laughs> right, I know. It last weekend at Mountain Archery Fest, uh, I was up there, and what I started doing, and I'm not sure why we didn't start doing it before now, because we've we've been talking for quite some time about, you know, we have to show people about this baronial way of of hauling meat, mm. and you know the neat thing about that, you know the physics behind that is that when you put it on, you put those those hind quarters on those that top limb on either side that the the meat of it the so the biggest part of that hind quarter actually swings around in front of you so it's virtually centered on your body weight yeah exactly with your midline interesting and so not only can you it it doesn't feel as heavy as what it should because it is so centered but you can also stand up straight now when is the last time that you've packed something out with any pack yeah and you've got a lot of weight on it either has to go one of two ways it's either got to go out away from you yep or it's got to go up so just the mere physics of it and you know that in fit they talk about fulcrums and levers, and mm. the further you get that weight away, even if it's, let's just say it's 15 pounds, the, weaker the further you it gets away, the weaker you become, and actually the, the heavier that seems. Yeah. And so it's no different with backpacks hauling big, heavy loads. So, and then if you go up with it, well, that's another problem all in itself, right? Yep. Um, so... So this way of packing meat, it it is just it's. I hate to use the cliche, but it's a game changer. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Well, I, the game changers are changing the game, right? <laughs> in and, and in the know, hunting world, like Onyx it, changed the game when it came to map right. software. You right. Know? So okay, lay it on us. Initial yeah. ascent. So so with with us, our one of our main core things is is to change lives. Yeah. Okay. That's to make, to make people's lives better. And we just happen to be doing that through hunters. Dennis, you're you're speaking my language right now. You know that the tagline of this podcast is transforming lives through primary adventure. Right. It's about leaving the impact. It's leaving the impact. It's, it's, it's impacting lives in a positive way. And our mere presence in this market, you know, when we first stepped foot in this market, people looked at us and said, you guys are crazy. This, do you, have you looked around? I mean, in our valley here, there's like five or six backpack manufacturers in our valley. Right. So you're, you're out of Idaho. So you're competing against Exo Mountain Gear. You're competing against Everly right. Stock. Uh, what, a, yep. you know, those are some big heavy hitters in the, in the industry. They really are. And so, but. Just our presence in the market, us stepping foot in the market, it raised the bar and it made hunting better because all of our competitors are now forced to make their products better. So it it helped every hunter out there. Love it. I absolutely so, love it. I mean, that's and, and and that's the thing right there. I mean, obviously we're in this, you know, to to make a living. And, but at the bottom line, we're in it to make hunting better. We're in to, to change lives through what we're doing. Beautiful. You know, I've always been a proponent of either you're getting better or you're getting worse. So if you're really just coasting and, and hanging tight, everyone else is going to be raising the bar all around you, therefore causing you to become worse in what you're doing. So yep. I think that is absolutely fantastic. And I knew there was a reason why I wanted to have you on this podcast. 
<laughs> you know, I never actually got a chance to talk to you at the Western Hunt Expo, but there was something about initial scent that that drew me. You know, I don't know, uh, you know, the positive energy or whatever it may be. Maybe I don't believe in coincidences, so God inspired, you could say. Absolutely. But that we were we were meant to talk and meant to share our passion for impacting lives. We all have our own, you know, skill set and way we go about it. And you did it through one of the most important things in the hunting world is backpack and boots. And you, you're doing it with the backpack. Yeah. I, I wrote an article yesterday, uh, in an email form. We've been doing some, some different things with, with email here lately and, uh, just, just email marketing and whatnot. But I wrote an article on your two most important pieces of gear uh, after your weapon, of course, right? Uh, and your boots and your your pack. Yeah, and uh, that's exactly right, man. And no two people's feet are alike, and really no two people's stature um, statures are alike either. So. You know, it's it's all a personal fit, when it, whether it comes to boots or whether it comes to packs. Right. So one of the things that I noticed on you, so I'm actually on your website right now poking around. I love backpacks, and I can't stand my Mystery Ranch specifically because of this. A spotting scope sleeve. The, the yeah. ability to quickly access your spotting scope and your tripod I believe that single-handedly is a game changer within itself because I don't want to have to unpack my entire bag to get to it. And I, I'm sure. going gonna, gonna to I'm not throwing Mystery Ranch under the bus because I still <laughs> use the pack, but they have the side zipper. Well, mm -hmm. every time my spotting scope, which is an angled one, goes in there along with the base plate to attach it to my tripod, it's like pushing on that zipper and I feel like I'm going to bust my pack every single time I zip it up and then everything's oh, yeah. shifts around. So one of the things that really drew me to your packs is this concept of spotting scope sleeve and a partial tripod sleeve that you have on, on the opposite side. Yeah. And that, that, uh, yeah, that was one thing. Cause, you know, I started out, Joe and I, we were like, well, we definitely want to have de dedicated sleeves for those two items. Um, you know, West, a Western hunter is most all the time going to carry a tripod, you know, unless you're elk hunting, that's, that's a different story. But if, if you're, if you're glassing for deer, if you're glassing for goats, sheep, bears, whatever, yep. um, a tripod is, is, is kind of the, a standard, the gold standard. So I wanted to have it where it was quick, quickly accessible. And so instead of having two full length sleeves, you know, one for the spotting scope, one for the tripod, decided to do that half sleeve over there for the tripod. It's dedicated. Um, you're going to run a tripod on one side, your spotting scope on the other to kind of balance the weight out. And to be able to access that tripod quickly is really important. Now, the spotter, I'm... Typically what I'm doing is when I get to my glassing knob, I'm going to pull the spotter out. I'm going to set it on top of my pack and I'm going to pull my tripod out, put my binoculars on and start there. My spotting scope, it may not get used at that, you know, particular point. Right. So I'm, I'm, I, I want the tripod where I can quickly access it at any time. Yeah. And so that's the reason we did that. We do have a, a compression strap there to hold that in. So you don't have to loosen uh, the main buckles on the pack that that's going to the frame right. um, every time. So, and then spotter, obviously that, that that's a fairly large pocket. It protects it um, and it will fit a, a 95 if you choose to pack that much weight around that's so cool so one of the things that i use my spotter for is i love videoing my hunts right and i oh, love awesome. and i love the a quick ability to like if you're peeking over an edge mm -hmm. and you see your animals right away or any animals i want to get video of them before they disappear so i phone scope everything and so that's, Isn't that awesome? Yes, the phone so, scope. <laughs> dude, it's incredible. And so I need quick access to my spotter right away. Yeah. Because you might hold up the binos, be like, oh, shoot. And then bam, spotter on, 
phone scope and you're good to go. Yeah. Awesome. So I love it. So, okay. Talk, uh, talk us through a little bit of your website and your product. So you have your pack system. So you sell right. your frames independently, correct? So the frame and suspension. So, so what we, what we do is we'll sell what we call the day pack. Okay. And our, our system is really modular. So all of our all of our systems go on that one frame and suspension, so it interchanges in seconds. So the 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 smallest one we sell is the day pack, and that includes the lid, so the full size lid, and the pannier load carrier. And basically, the pannier load carrier is just like a meat shelf, and it has a large pocket on the outside. So if you use that in conjunction with the lid, it's a great day pack you can pack everything that you need for that day and pack meat off the mountain immediately um and so then you go from that if if you want something with a little bit more storage let's say you know let's say you're going to continue the day pack thing but you're going to get into the later season where you're going to need uh layers and and that sort of thing or you you're gonna bivy out and and you want to stay overnight or you're gonna stay a couple of nights uh, then all of a sudden we introduce the 2k um and and that's that's kind of that next and it's actually about 2500 cubic inches um so and, and a lot of guys are they're using the 2k but they're also keeping that pannier load carrier folded up against the frame so that was my question going through your website and a lot of people who are in the beginning stages of learning about a backpacking uh, or a hunting backpack, mm-hmm. they don't understand what a meat shelf is or, or you, in your case, calling it a pannier. Uh-huh. So the confusion of, well, do I need to buy the pannier or do I get the bag or does it stay connected? All that. So it's good that you're, you're going through and, and diving into this. Yeah. So, and so basically just, let's go back just a little bit. So, so a meat shelf, it's attached to the frame at, at the, at the bottom, uh, essentially, but it's, but it's a hip belt. And so the top of the hip belt is as, as low as you want any load of meat to sit. Okay. Because if, if you let that meat get down further, all of a sudden, your your weight is not in the in the proper spot for carrying it optimally right. and that's what you were talking about with your rei backpack yeah um, everything just sank to the bottom and it was off. horrible yeah yeah so so that that meat shelf is meant to haul meat it preferably you know it's going to be in a game bag or a dry bag and it's designed that pannier load carrier is designed to keep that meat up high and tight where it belongs. Okay. Um, so with our system, so if, if you go past the two K let's, so our flagship system is, is our four K that's the IA four K pack. It's a little over 4,000 cubic inches with the lid. So this is the same lid now that I was talking about with the day pack. So here's, here's what we do. And this is how we started um, with our pack system. We started with the IA4K pack system, and it was uh, called a Combo 3. So we've got three combos. One is the Combo 2. Uh, that is just the bag, the lid, and the frame and suspension. Okay? Now you add the pannier load carrier in there as a meat shelf. Uh, that's that's your combo three and then combo four we'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute if, if you don't mind yeah not at all. Um, that includes a water bladder and and we've kind of designed a pretty cool water bladder storage on our pack so getting back so rewind just a little bit our flagship so the the a4k with the pannier that's kind of how we started using this system and it, it is a system. So the way we hunted, Joe and I, we would pack in there, ever how many miles it was with, with all of our camp on our back for however many days, and we would set up a spike camp. Okay, so once we set up that spike camp, we would take that 4K bag off. Okay, it comes off in a matter of seconds. 
then with our system, we can, we can unfold that pannier from the frame because it's folded back there. My pannier never leaves my frame. You use your lid and the pannier and you, and you buckle your pannier three on either side. There's two on the top and then you strap your lid to it and you're running in day mode. So you're running, you know, a little over four pounds with that system. You've got everything you need from your kill kit, first aid kit, food, game bags, um, and, and maybe a puffy jacket or something, and your weapon, uh, as well as any optics that you're going to take. You can carry all that in that day pack. And so we're going off hunting fast, and we're also to bring back a load of meat. Okay, so that's the system. Once you get back to camp and you've got that that deer or whatever, say you've got your first load of meat, then you can sandwich that load of meat. Um, so your your meat goes between your bag and your frame. Yep. And doesn't get anything in your in your bag bloody, and you're going back to the truck. Um, so it's just a it's that's that's the system that we designed when we started out, and in 2018. And at Expo 2019, that's what we had. We we had that 4K system with the pannier load carrier, and man, it, it's good for. I mean, if you if you want to just use the pannier as a, as a day pack, you can use it as a day pack, or you can go creatively. You can go up to seven days with it if you'd like. That's so with cool. The, with the 4K. So because we're in the in the world of mentorship and teaching people. Traditionally, in the backpack world, 3,500 cubic inches is known from like a three to five day backpack in size. So if you could carry gear for three to five days, as soon as you cross that threshold, typically 5,500 cubic inches is known for like five days and beyond, a week and however long you want to make a hunt. So you offer a 4,000 cubic inch pack as well as a 6,000 cubic inch pack. Yeah. Yeah, there we we saw a need for, you know, the expedition style of backpack hunting. Guys going to Alaska, you know, spending spending more than a week uh, back there, or you've got guys that just like to carry a lot of gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they uh, they like their creature comforts, huh? Exactly. I love it. So, Dennis, tell tell me a little bit more about about your journey as a hunter and why hunting is, has impacted you so much. And, you know, this is a soulful hunter, right? So what's your, what's your story as to why hunting is so important to you? Why it caused you to create a backpack that you specifically said earlier, you wanted to impact lives. That's, that's a great question. You know, for me, ever since I was a little kid, it was all about the adventure. Um, Yeah. You know, I just, I loved, I loved the, the gear and growing up, I mean, I didn't have a lot. My first kit, I'm, kit is like one of my favorite words. Um, ever since I was a little, little boy, my first kit was a survival kit and it was, it was cool because it was in the handle of a knife. Remember those Rambo knives? Oh yeah. It had a little, uh, waterproof matches. You could put a map in oh, there, the compass. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Had that and my first aid kit. Um, ever since that point, and I forget how old I was, but I was always catching animals. I was always, you know, where the red fern grows. Um, that book, I just, I was forced to read it in elementary school and <laughs> so glad I was. Powerful book. You know? Oh, powerful book. Um, so, but yeah, it was just, it was just about the adventure, about being out there with the animals, get to interact with them, seeing what I could do, um, you know, whether it be fishing or, or hunting or trapping, um, I was, I was doing it and that kind of went with me. Uh, and I had some different stages in my life. I've, I've done a lot of stuff that's completely off the end of the spectrum you know, from, from hunting, yeah. but that's 
hunting is one thing that's always stayed with me. Um, I was forced to, when, when my wife had our twins, I was kind of forced to give it up for a few years just because of time. I mean, you know, I, I had my priorities and, and you want to be a good father. Absolutely. And And a good husband, you know, had to work and, um, it just got put to the back burner. But then as soon as that little boy started showing some interest in hunting, um, man, I, I found, I found my passion again. And, uh, that has, has, it's been something that stayed with me ever since. And I, it's one of those deals that to share that with other people is just so awesome. And I, I get a little nervous to be honest with you when, you know, when I think about myself as a mentor, whether it be a mentor to my son or daughters, um, in hunting or somebody else, I, I have, I have a client that today told me, and, and this is in my other business, but I have a client that said, I just put in with my buddies and drew an Idaho cow elk tag and I've never hunted in my life, (laughs) but I'm really looking forward to the adventure. I went out and with the help of one of my buddies, I I bought a, a new rifle. I'm getting ready. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you tell me what you need. I've got a sporting goods store at my house. Right, right. <laughs> so just come on over. We'll talk gear. We'll get you outfitted. It'll be awesome. That's so, so, that's so sweet. It, it really is. And so, you know, I'm sure with his buddies that, that are probably experienced and everything, and I'm, I'm going to hopefully get to be a, a little part of that, whether it's getting him geared up or, Maybe, maybe sending him out with a good backpack. I, I know a guy. Um, <laughs> you, you know a guy. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be awesome. But, but that whole thing just fires me up. Um, I, I, was, I was bear hunting this spring, and I've, I've baited bears now for two years. And it's been an awesome experience. I love baiting bears. I love spot, spot and stalk bear hunting. But it, baiting bears kind of gets me back to my youth, gets me back to sitting in a tree stand, um, yeah. you know, waiting on these deer to come. And we had a guy that had never bear hunted before. And so just getting to be a part of getting him his first bear. Uh, and I, I, I wasn't there on the day that he killed his first bear, but, I sat many a day with him um, and watched him sit there and try to be patient and move too much and maybe make a little bit too much noise. And just those lessons that he, that he had to learn just this spring in a few weeks. Yeah. And then to see him, you know, with, with that bear in that picture from the other night was just, it's fantastic. And that's why I do. It's impacting lives. Just that right there. Yep. Uh, impacted his life forever. And guess what? He had his daughter with him that had never been out hunting. Ooh. And you should have seen her face in that picture. I mean, she was just elated. So that made an impact pact on her life. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, on this podcast, we talk a lot about, well, I'm a believer that we are made in the image of God. And Absolutely. God is the creator. So therefore, we are many creators. We are meant to create in our lives. And people have different skill sets and they create in different manners. But here you are creating creating gear that is changing people's lives. And at the same time, you're also creating a positive um, experience for people. And that is impacting not only themselves in that moment but for generations to come and this is why we believe that mentorship is conservation because when you can when you can empower somebody with an experience to be self-reliant and be able to provide for themselves in a skill set that needs to be taught in schools which it's not as much especially in the state of washington where i'm here and you can't do 
anything greater for somebody than to teach them how to feed themselves. You know, give a man a fish that eats for a day. Give a man, uh, or teach a man a fish he eats for a lifetime. Teaching right. somebody how to hunt is, I think, one of the most greatest things you could ever do for somebody. Yeah, uh, no, no question. And I've seen it, you know, just with my kids. And you know, and I'll be honest with you. I mean, I, I have. You know, we learn a lot of things in life, and I have not done. I've not done everything right. I mean, from from being a husband to a father, um, you know, there's a lot of things that we look back on and say, "Man, I wish I would have done that different." Yep. Um, when my kids were growing up, when they were little, I mean, I was I was busy building a career. I was I was busy trying to provide for you know for everybody and also trying to make sure that that i still um stayed sane you know so so trying to take a little bit of time for myself and and whatnot and there's some things that that i wish i would have done i wish i would have forced the issue sometimes and you know went ahead and and got back into hunting when they were really young, that way I could have taken them because out here in the West, I mean, I was, I was a Southeastern hunter and hunting back there is so much different, uh, in a, in a lot of ways. And so I had to come out here and learn myself. And so I didn't feel qualified. And by learning yourself, just let, let's clarify that. You're not just yeah. saying learning yourself as in learning how to hunt, but you're saying learning yourself while you're hunting. Am I, am I correct on that? That's, ex that's exactly right. And, you know, doing it mostly through other people and gaining knowledge through other people, through mentors, right? Yeah, right. And, and I'll tell you what, it was, it's my experience that it's not easy to find mentors in hunting oh, it's not dude it's so hard it really is because i mean you've got a lot of guys that obviously put put in a lot of work mm -hmm. um they've got their chosen hunting partners they've got their tradition you know as you, you really don't want to first of all mess that up right for them you don't want to impose um and at the same time you know these guys have worked really hard to to gain this knowledge and some just don't want to they don't want to share it they've worked really hard for it yeah um well and you know human nature is inherently selfish yeah know, absolutely self-preservation but when it goes beyond self-preservation it goes into me 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 all about me mm -hmm. And you, you know, hunters, they love to say they're conservationists, but if they truly were conservationists, they'd care about the next generation. Right. You know, it's not just about conserving animals, it's about conserving hunters and making sure there's hunters to last. Right. Uh, through legislation and voting rights and, you know, all the different things that's going on. And, and so hearing you say this, you're getting, dude, Dennis, you're my people, man. The, there is a reason <laughs> what the, you and I, I've, you know, like I said, I'm first off, I'm going to buy an initial ascent pack. You're, you got me hooked. I'm, I'm a supporter. Thank you. I got to figure out how to sell my pack before August so I can get a new one on our next hunt. But, but, uh, there's a reason there's no coincidence in life. I'm a believer and a preacher that we create and manifest our own existence, what we want. And, and part of that is you can't outgive good. What you put out into the universe, what you put out into this world, what you give to others is will return back to you. May not be on the timing that you expect or you want, but what goes around comes around. And mentorship is ultimately just love, loving people. And that's, that is what it is, man. Investing in somebody else and not yourself. Absolutely. You know, setting aside those those selfish ways, you know, setting aside that me, me, me and giving, giving to others. I mean, you know, that's, that's what the Bible tells us, man. And, you know, and I don't want to get off into the weeds on, Do on it. the get, latest, get in the weeds, the man. latest happenings. <laughs> but I tell you what, if we had a lot more love and a lot less selfishness, 
this world would be a different place. Amen to that. I tell you, you know, there are a lot of people that need to take a step back. You ever seen the movie Ferris Bueller? Oh, yeah. You know when Cameron is in the art museum and he's standing so close to the painting, all he sees is the dots? But when yeah. you actually stand back and look at it, you can see this beautiful painting. Right. People just need to take a step back, man. Don't be so yeah. quick to judge, so quick to point the finger, and just take a breath, evaluate the system, evaluate what's going on, and are you either you're going to continue in your life hate and judgment, or you're going to perpetuate love. Right. Yeah. Because absolutely. You, what's the opposite of love? If you're not giving love, you're giving fear or hate. Right. Yeah. It, it, so it, you can't you can't play both sides of the fence. No. Nope. So. No. Nope. Man. Well said, man. Well said. Well, welcome to the Soulful Hunter. This is <laughs> this is why we do it. This is awesome. Uh, is there anything you want to talk about your your backpacks really quick before we wrap the show up? You know, just. um the the one thing that that I will will say, you know, we're we're not a we're not a large company. Um Joe and I uh we're the owners, we're the employees, we're the social media department, we're the customer it. service. Um, you know, if if you call if you call initial ascent, you're gonna get most likely you're gonna get me or and and sometimes you're gonna get Joe. Um we have our different roles in the company. Social media wise, uh, it's, it's me, um, you know, as far as, um, putting packs together, I touch every single one of them. Yeah. Every one of them. And so if, if you get a pack shipped to you, it comes from our shop, which I run and so your, it, uh, your packs are made in America then they are made in America. They are made in Idaho. Um, our frames are made over in Rexburg and our soft goods are made right there in garden city, Idaho. So, um, awesome. Once, once the sewing is, is done, which Joe and I do not do any of that. <laughs> Be glad. Yeah. Um, but once that's done and we get, we get all the pieces, um, Joe and I are putting them together and here lately, uh, we've, we've been putting a lot of packs together, uh, getting, you know, getting ready for the, the, the big months of yeah. July and August. Um, but yeah, I, we, we touch every single one of them and there's a lot of pride, a lot of care that, that goes into that. And, you know, I, one thing about, you know, what we do is we back everything up. Um, and I if, was going to ask if, you about that. That's awesome. Yeah. We back everything up. If your frame gets run over by a semi for some reason, <laughs> And it breaks. I don't care what happens to it. You send that sucker back in pieces. Yeah. And we send you a brand new one, no questions asked. That's awesome. Um, you take care of the people that invest in you. Absolutely. You, you, you we give we do. You give good. Yeah. And and the thing is, is you know, it's it's our customers that I mean, that's who we are. Yeah. You know, and and so you're you call us up, and you're gonna you're gonna get what you hear right, right here, you're, you're going to get this. And, um, you know, we just love it. We love talking to the customers. We love working with the customers. Um, the, the fit we have a, we have a 30 day money back guarantee. So, you know, I know with, with us being direct consumer, that means we don't have a Cabela's or sportsman's or something out there where you can actually buy our packs and try them on. Yep. Um, we have a showroom that is right here at my place and I I'm serious, man. We, we make appointments and you come right here and I fit you myself. We measure your torso length and we set you up right. Um, that is awesome. So yeah. And you know, I spent, I spent an hour and 45 minutes with two guys, uh, just last night and, uh, you know, and I've, I've still got a, still got a full-time gig that, uh, you know, that I do. So, you know, this is, this is my passion. Um, it's becoming very busy, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh -huh. But, uh, but that care is still there. And, you know, no matter how, how busy we get, that's one thing that we've, 
vowed not to let go. That's beautiful. Hey, one question just to clarify sizing on your website. So a lot of people, yeah. when they see belt sizes, you know, like I wear a size 34 pants, but mm -hmm. is that how you're going based off your belt size is the pant size you wear? Or are you yep. talking about actually measuring around someone's waist? No, that's a great question. So, so we are actually going by your pants size. So, uh, so you at, at a 34, we would put you into a medium hip belt. Yep. We have four hip belt sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. And then, uh, we have quite a bit of torso length adjustment. So there's, there's about six inches of torso length adjustment. And, uh, we are, um, we're, we're utilizing, uh, torso length which you don't see that very often in the hunting community but when i sold backpacks i measured everyone from their c7 vertebrae down to their hips and i'd get them measured up and be like okay well you're into this size pack or this pack actually doesn't fit you because they only offer certain sizes and exactly that, something that people forget is that nowadays packs fit like clothes yep yep that's it's it's completely customizable it's it's tailored uh, you know, to the user. I love it. Uh, here's a quick story for all you listeners out there when it comes to backpack. So the same backpack that I carried out the bear, uh, in my one solo trip that sucked, that has last left a lasting impact. And actually that story sparked Washington backcountry, which is now led into this podcast, but that backpack, I didn't order it in a size. And so when I took it for a week long, uh, backpacking trip, the, the hip belt was already large on me, but by the time I ended up losing so much weight over my trip, the pack belt didn't cinch tight enough around my waist. So it's very funny. So like if you're sitting on the borderline between two hip belts, go with the smaller size. You're going to be very thankful for that. Absolutely. And especially if you're hunting hard in those Western mountains, you might be losing some weight also, or at least, you know, don't pack as much uh, junk food. <laughs> <laughs> there you go but yeah so so speaking of that so um we do have a 30-day money-back guarantee so if if you're not anywhere near us and you you are interested in a pack um we actually work with the customer so if if they want to go ahead order that pack and then fit it themselves um we've taken lots of customers uh through facetime and actually work walk them through the pack and the fitting process we do have an excellent video on uh on youtube on our youtube channel so uh you can you can do it there and if everything's not just right for you then hey you you send it back and uh, we give you your money back cool i love it i love it dude Dennis, I am so excited, and I'm actually really honored to call you a friend now, man. I really appreciate it. You know, these conversations, I've, uh, when I see you in person, I'm sure I'm going to give you a big hug and be like, hey, Dennis, what's up? <laughs> that's awesome, Johnny. Man, same here, man. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, this has been a pleasure. Um, so I, I just, I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Well, Hey, it's all about community, right? You surround yourself yep. with people that are going to build you up, not tear you down. Absolutely. And, and that's important. So, um, how do people find initial ascent? You guys on social okay. media, you on website, yep. all that. Yep. So add initial ascent on Instagram. Um, let's see, uh, www.initialascent.com, uh, on, that's the website. Uh, we're on Facebook and also YouTube, so Initial Ascent Packs on YouTube. Perfect. I'm going to so, check that yeah. out. Yeah, go check us out. Uh, we've got a lot of cool videos on there. We're doing some stuff right now. Just started about five weeks ago uh, doing a, a Tech Tip Tuesday, and uh, it's it's really cool. It's, it's not only us, but some of our athletes, some of our friends in the industry, giving these quick little hunting tips or training tips. Uh, just to make everybody better. I like it. We might have to throw in some of our own over here for you That'd guys. That'd be awesome. I love it. Dennis, thank you so much, man. God bless you. And what hunts you got planned for this coming year? Oh, man. Uh, so my son and I are finally going to get to hunt. I, I'm pretty sure he's not going to play football this year. Um, 
he's let's see we've got a backcountry deer hunt that we're going to do here in idaho we're actually going to fly in Ooh. um and get dropped off for, Frank for several days it's gonna yep it's gonna be awesome and uh then we've got an antelope hunt in wyoming i'm hunting early season uh archery mule deer in nevada finally drew that tag uh, i that's the august tag right yeah august 10th oh dude i want one of those so bad so, <laughs> looking forward to that so and then in september we'll be uh we'll be trying to get uh archery elk done here in idaho so cool well i can't wait to hear hear how your season went and get you back on and, and tell you how much i enjoyed using your pack and how much uh i enjoyed uh hearing your stories that you're going to share on this podcast coming up awesome i can't wait to be back man i love it awesome well everyone go check out initial ascent and uh give them some love you gotta you know people that want to take care of you is is very far and few it seems like in, in today's world so Give some love to the people that also want to love you back and be, be a big fan of them. Go follow them on Instagram, social media, all that stuff. As always, if you could give a rating and leave a review for this podcast, I'd greatly appreciate it. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of The Soulful Hunter. As always, stay soulful. If you enjoyed today's podcast, I'd love it if you could go ahead and give this a rating as well as subscribe. Also, you can check us out on Instagram under the Soulful Hunter podcast. Make sure to tag us in pictures and posts and use the hashtag Soulful Hunter. To find out more about the Soulful Hunter podcast, go to soulfulhunter.com and be sure to follow the podcast as we are going to be bringing you a lot of great information, insight, and changing lives through Primal Adventure. I look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. Stay tuned and stay soulful. Stay soulful.